as a chief until I, you know, when I came around, he was still playing when he was the big chief. I was just the, <laughs> the up and coming chief or something like that. Some of the images were stereotypically negative. Norman McLean in the December 1969 edition of Hockey World magazine wrote this about Jim Nielsen. Like most Indians, Jim is swarthy of skin and black of hair. Unlike most, he does not imbibe of too much Kickapoo Joy Juice and always is in good physical shape. Kickapoo Joy Juice? Yeah, well, I mean, it's, it's too bad. Well, they can hardly do it now, but in those days, they, they, they were, no, no homework was done, not feeling that, I mean, maybe it wouldn't offend me, but there's other people who read that and are going to be saying, what the hell is these bozos, you know, how can they get away with it? Some, you know, your editors, well, they must be able to do something like that, because I think if you ever did that to the colored people, wow. They had lots of writers, and uh, they would, you know, they write their stories, and they, they would include what my, some of my background was, and I remember one time very early, probably my first year or so, one of the, the PR guy, I remember his name, Herb Gorin, he wanted me to do that one time, wear, wear a hairdress, but I, or a headdress, but I never, I never did it. I did something like that some years ago for Glenn Sather to help, to help us set uh, Red Fisher up from the Montreal, is he right for the Montreal uh, Gazette. Gazette? Yeah, Montreal Gazette. But anyway, Red Fisher is a good friend, and he gets to that uh, Glenn's place quite often. And he covered this painting, and it was a native painting. I put a headdress on, and I up by my house, everybody had there the cameras and everything, and I, and I had the paintbrush and all that took pictures of me with my the headdress on and I'm painting, pretending I'm painting. He did get an Indian painting. It was a picture of me painting my house. That was the only time I really wore a headdress. Yeah. The problem with all this Indian imagery was that it was most confusing to Armstrong and Nielsen, both who were products of mixed marriages, an Indian mother and a white father, and did not grow up immersed in native traditions and lifestyles. I grew up in an orphanage with not, uh, not knowing, uh, well, the orphanage was probably, well, predominantly white, so I know, knew nothing about it. Jim Nielsen is retired and spends his time reading, catching up on his native culture and playing recreational hockey in Winnipeg. The next Indian to star in the NHL has been described as a six foot three man who was put into a compactor until he came out five foot seven. Stan Jonathan's nickname, therefore, was Little Chief. A Mohawk from the Six Nations Reserve near Brantford, Ontario, being Indian gave Jonathan an advantage over other teenagers who were looking for work. He could go across the nearby U.S. border to find work without a work permit or a visa, and being Mohawk, he could capitalize on a legendary reputation for bravery in working the high steel. I went on it for, uh, for a few years, right until when I was uh, 16 till I was uh, 19. I think it was uh, 125 feet. I was up without 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 either side. Anything was either side. If you make one mistake, you, you you don't make it again. But there's no mistaking this: Stan Jonathan was a true Indian fighter, called pound for pound the toughest player in the NHL. Little Stan Jonathan gained fame, mostly with his fists. Being small and I had to look after myself and, uh, and being a native too, uh, you had to get in there and you had to show them that you weren't going to be uh, pushed around or pushed out of the league. Or I always had more penalty minutes than I, I should have, but, but I was always there for the other players too. Everybody thinks when they think of Stan Jonathan, they think of the fights and all that, which he was absolutely the best I ever saw. They don't know they had the most accurate shot in the National Hockey League. When he had 27 goals, his shooting accuracy was right now is 26.9, I think it was, and that's right with Mario Lemieux right now. So everybody thinks when they think of Stan Jonathan, they think of the Bouchard fight. It is one of the most famous fights in hockey history, and it took place during the 1978 Stanley Cup semifinal series between Boston and Montreal. He was an enforcer for from uh, Montreal, and I think he weighed 220 at least. Uh, I weighed 185 pounds, I think, uh, in the playoffs. And, uh, I'm, I'm, I say 5'8", but I think I'm only 5'7 and a half. But back those days when you had those high shoes on, I was 5'9", so. Because he was a monster, Bouchard. He had hands like that. He was about 6'3", 
240 pounds. He was a monster. He had a head that, like this. I just always just hoping to keep my head on. At the him. start of the fight, I have to say that he was actually lifting Stanley off off the ice. If, if you're and, and he was lifting, him. and I sat onto the bench. The guys, I think maybe Stan's.